Hello guys, and the day is upon us. It's time to find out who the winner is of the Isle of Wight village build off. But before we do that, I wanna say a big thank you to firstly, the competitors, the five viewers who wanted to take part in this series. They made things so easy for me to get this going and they have produced absolute masterpieces. I wasn't sure how this would work out in the end, but I think we have the foundations for something that we could quite possibly do again in the future. So if you enjoyed this concept, if you would like to dive into the Isle of Wight and build a little village, let me know, jump into the Discord. Details are in the description below. We'd love to see if we can get a round two going. Now, before we go through the actual results, I wanted to have a look through these myself and sort of talk through my thoughts and feelings of each person's build because they all deserve to have recognition here. They are all fantastic builds. And I thought it would be a bit boring if I did this all on my own. So I have got another UK resident alongside me here today. We have Rick4000. Now I'm sure you all know who he is, whether it be via his amazing UK work on the workshop or his YouTube channel. So Rick, I hope you've got your thinking hat on today because um, there's a lot to go through. Um, I think the thinking hat is just behind me, let me grab it. Got it, let's go. <laughs> okay then, so let's do this. Let's start off with the first viewer. Okay, so the first build we have is from Cheezymes. Let's um, let's have a look what they have been doing. Let's have a review. So I think firstly, I'm sure you can agree the the layout is quite a, a UK driven layout, isn't it? It's quite a a common look, I think, in terms of the the road layout here. Anyway. Yeah, this uh, looks very village like. Definitely like a village around uh, around near where I live. Anyway, really loving loving the roads road layout. And the, the layout of the houses as well, there's like, there's, it's quite spacious and that's kind of what you tend to see in these villages. They're not compacted buildings, you know, as you would see in a built up sort of town area. They, they're quite spacious with big gardens, which I think is also quite a, an evident village look as well. Yeah. yeah, good variation in buildings as well, which you get quite a lot in a, in a few villages. And I like these car parks as well. These car parks are quite an interesting addition because a lot of these houses that you see kind of do have you know, no lack, well, have a lack of space for car parking. So having these little car parking alleys is quite a, a villagey thing to have as well, I think. Yeah, definitely. And the traditional pub there and church, I mean, you can't really go wrong. That's pretty much UK village vibes through and through, really, isn't it? Yeah, I do love the layout of that church. I really like the, the little island in the middle of the road mm. that separates it in front of the church, and that's a nice little touch. Yeah. And the um, you was mentioned as well off camera the, the 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 actual vibe of the fields and the trees as well kind of you know fills the gap out quite nicely here. Fields definitely give a UK vibe. If you ever if you ever flying over the UK mm. in a plane, you look down and that is pretty much what you see. And I think that's one of the hard things that I have found personally. When I've been doing these these village builds. I'm sure you have as well. It's kind of filling out the space. It's quite hard to fill out the space but not repeat yourself so much and make it look too repetitive. I think the combination here has been quite nice and fluent. It kind of flows together. Definitely. It is it's one of the things when I'm if I'm creating the village and yeah, the space you've got that blank space and you're thinking, what can I add there? sort of things. But he's done it done it really good there. And this is one of the things I really like as well is the um, little dried stream as well going across. It's um, something you do, I mean, I've, I've come across this quite a lot, you know, villages near me where they've got a dried out stream that maybe it fills up in the in the winter, but this little bridge as well, it's just like a nice little nice little view and setting. Yeah, and the, the good use of the like uh, the droopy sort of trees as well. The, uh, loving this on that last cinematic with the island um, in the middle there. That's a, like a little green with the tree, and that's really, that, basically looks like a village around the corner from me. So we've got the village shops either side as well. Hmm, definitely. And I'm kind of glad that I, I and yourself <laughs> yeah. are not the ones making the judgment because <laughs> these are these are five really, really good builds, which um, are hard to separate really. But yes, that's um, cheese iron. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, so on to the second build. This is by Jack. And I mean, firstly, the layout again, a very iconic sort of village layout, a very similar, well, singular road with a few little bits going off, not too too heavy in that sense. Yeah, uh, like in the sort of main high street vibe where, yeah, like I say, not many roads going off the sides. Very, very uh, village-like. 
Yeah, and you, that's the thing with some of these villages, you don't really expect a lot to be growing off of them really, certainly not sort of pegging off from the, the main core road, it is, you know, very, very small in terms of the narrowness of the road. Yeah, isn't definitely. It? But one thing, oh, I really like this um, this fire station as well. Um, I'm not sure if you'd have this size of fire station in a village, but it's the detailing is amazing in this. Yeah, it's really good. I like the. Uh, is that there's even a fire in the tower behind it or something for the training yes. tower? Yes. <laughs> Moving over here as well. I know we spoke a lot of camera about this one particular cinematic and the level of detail on these decals and this building in, in general is just ridiculously good. Yeah, it's really. I like that. Um, when I do my own builds, I do my industrial um, areas like this. I really like that sort of back alley industrial vibe. And what are your thoughts on the layout of the, the houses? I mean, the, the gardens themselves are nice and big, very traditional for villages. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm loving the, uh, the back garden details and stuff, the way they've obviously separated the gardens up. Because as we were speaking off camera, you were saying that sometimes people don't even realise that they're a semi-detached house so it's hmm. it's good they've added the garages on as well so and i get a um a vibe of a more upper class village area from the detail of these gardens there's a few swimming <laughs> yeah, pools around yeah. and there you know they got a it's got more of a, an upper class stance i think the way these have been designed and the, the buildings that have been picked themselves as well and um i know you was a, you was keen on this little shot here as well of the sort of the the downwards high street area as yeah well. a really good view of the village from that one there and the nice curve in the wall as well to make it a bit more unique. And the use of the UK road signs as well is always um, a nice thing to see. It's, it's, I think um, in general, Jack's used the um, the props really well. He's used a lot of the UK props. Um, and we've got the post office here as well that we talked about earlier with the actual post vans out the back, which is, you know, it's kind of, he's almost thought about things in a logical way of where would these vans be for the post office. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I really do love this uh, shot of the bus. De depot, I'd say it is. Uh, it was mm. Depot car park. It's a uh, yeah, really good. I like that. Yeah, I think going back as well to the comments we made earlier about the the level of use of the detail, uh, sorry, the decals. I mean, you know, that's what really makes this area pop. You know, if you didn't do that, it would just look like a few buses parked up randomly. But the fact that he's kind of made it look like this destroyed area sort of a wasteland that's now being occupied by these buses really really does tell another story yeah, it's, uh, good decal use throughout the whole build and um, yeah moving over we got the the church up and coming here as well this is um, well I think really well laid out yeah isn't it? that is a spot-on layout of the church to be fair and yeah that was Jack's work really well done so third up we have Greenbeak and let's start with the layout. The layout to me is a little bit different to the, the previous two. It's almost like it's a lot of rural lanes meeting up. What's your thought on those? Yeah, I mean, I really like the compactness of the uh, houses in the middle there. It's kind of, and then it expands out to other areas. That's really good. And also I'm, like, I'm loving the, uh, the road at the top that turns into like a dirt road, which is very common within mm. villages. Yes, yeah, certainly, yeah. It's definitely something I've seen very often and um, it's quite a, a unique thing to add. It's not something I've, I've actually thought about putting in myself, to be fair, on my builds. That's, uh, no, same here. And, um, yeah, I think the, the choice of the houses as well, they work. They're, I mean, you, you mentioned about them being compact. I know we mentioned earlier that the villages do tend to be a bit more sparse and there's a lot more room for bigger gardens. But I think the layout that he's put together here works really well. Like, they're compact, but they still have their own little sort of space and you know they've all still got their gardens there but it's very very different way of putting buildings down yeah he's definitely uh made mo made the most of the move it tool with this uh with mm. this section yeah it's really i really like the compactness there it's really good it almost reminds me a bit of playing tetris you kind of he's kind of like you know he's found the right buildings to fit in these areas but still make it realistic and them having their gardens and their own space which i think works really yeah. well i love the fact as well that they're not they're not entirely level they're all at a slight angle mm. which is also it happens a lot now leading on to one of my favorite parts of this build is this little could we class it as a mansion or would be more of a sort of manor house maybe i'm not too sure uh, ex some executive house definitely yeah, yeah. yes fountain in the back garden uh, and a giant roundabout before there before the, the garages it's a I, I do love that roundabout thing it's really good yeah 
roundabout works really well I like the cobbled grounds as well it's kind of it gives you that feeling that you'd imagine driving down here and coming to this sort of you know fancy house with a nice cobbled driveway and you know you'd imagine almost a professional footballer maybe yeah. <laughs> living yeah. somewhere like this it's it's got that sort of vibe that you know someone with a lot of wealth yeah definitely has got a got a house out in the sticks as we would say and this as well this is a very interesting concept added in here it's not something that anyone else has done and um We've got a little like campsite here, which I think is a cool little thing. It's, I mean, some people probably wouldn't imagine this to be in a, a rural village area, but you would tend to see this sort of thing, especially on the island. You know, you have these little random scattered villages around, maybe more so towards the coast, but you do get these ones out in the sticks where people maybe just want to walk around in the countryside. And I think this is a really cool little concept to add in. Yeah, exactly. If you've got a few nice pubs in the village, head to the campsite. Job exactly. done. But yeah, so good good layout campsite I really uh, it's a good addition to this mm, definitely and this is one of my favourite screenshots I think from um, Green Beak in general it's just it just cries out a rural build isn't it very very, yeah. s very iconic in that sense and um, good variation of houses mm, definitely I think all in all another fantastic build from Green Beak indeed this is getting going to be tough this is going to be tough it is so up now is Don Parr and I mean wow he's <laughs> He's had a week to build this and this is by far the biggest amount of detail that we've had in this competition. Um, I'm guessing we could probably class this more as a small town as opposed to a village. I think it's a little bit too big to be classed as a, as a village in that sense but nonetheless the detail levels of this is insane and the layout I still think is very UK based in terms of you know towards more of a small town. What, what do you think about that Rick? Yeah really good layout but I, I'd agree it's more a good, it's a very good town layout um, good use of buildings again I think the difficult thing as well obviously the other guys have done a smaller build so far but what Don Parr has done is he's obviously had a lot more of a larger space to fill out but he's also used a good combination of buildings you're not looking at this area thinking you know he's used the same houses every time he's still added a lot in here but still made it look like there's a lot of lot of different variances going on yeah I mean the, the detail that's gone into this is uh insane really considering yeah. it's been a week that's it it's, yeah it's ridiculous it's and garden centres all sorts going on mm. and I think this to me is the highlight of the build in, in the sense of giving it some different character is these these waterfalls dropping down like and they're not yeah the bridge over the river uh, good use of good use of grass and trees as well Yes, yeah, I think that's one thing Don Parr's really done well is the variance of different types of trees. I mean, the the fields in the background, I would probably say are more sort of Dutch-based. The UK doesn't ha have so much of a bright colour um, fields, but, you know, in terms of if you looked at this outside of this, this competition, this would be, an you know, an amazing build. There's so much variance, different colours. It just catches your eye wherever you look, really, doesn't it? Yeah, I do, in I do like this uh, little... Um walkway walkthrough as well that's where mm. you get a lot of them around yes yeah and i think here as well we mentioned this off camera the um the different terrain of this drop as well with this staircase going down to the church i mean it's not it's not an easy thing to do i mean the the, the map layout that i gave everyone did have a bit of a terrain um height adjustment that they had to work with and this is kind of an amazing way of doing it by using these these walls and putting these staircases down it just adds a different bit of character again to the build yeah definitely i mean i assume it was a bit of po magic getting all that to to look good like mm. that so it's a solid solid detailed build definitely i think the the street level stuff is where it really comes alive as well i mean obviously i've got the luxury of looking out off camera at this and i was zooming around these streets and the amount of detail that he's put into this street level stuff is insane like you look from the top and it looks detailed but when you look in at these sort of levels it just it, yeah a lot of hours have been put into this yeah you can clearly see that i like this uh, cinematic here with the fencing and the walls in front of the houses so it's good use of the the house props because the house props don't come obviously with the front gardens and a lot of uh, terrace houses in the uk do have front gardens so that's it's good work there. It's these small terrace gardens as well. Like, you know, terrace houses don't tend to have big gardens where you can have flowers and plants in and stuff. It is almost just sometimes like a, a metre away from the, exactly, the yeah. pathway, isn't it? And these gates work so well. Yeah. But yeah, all in all, I think this is a, an incredible detailed build. I mean, 
you can tell that he's put a lot of hours in. I mean, he's, we gave him a week, and it seems like he's had about a month to work on this. So this is um, <laughs> this is a really, really good build. So a great build there for Dunbar. Yeah. Okay, so last but not least, we have the fifth competitor, which is WJ Koopman. And, I mean, firstly, layout-wise, I mean, again, it's one one road, pretty much, which is very common for UK, British, rural um, villages. There's a little cul-de-sac going off as well, but I think all in all, it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, yes, very slick and neat layout. This is really mm. like it. And the choice of houses, again, you know, I mean, there's a lot of choice. I know we could just keep saying about the choice of houses. There is a lot of choice on, especially the UK now, thanks to yourself. And Mac Welshman and Sparks has been introducing some more. So there's obviously, you know, there's certain houses that fit, I think, villages more so than others. And I think the ones that he's picked here, a nice combination of them. You've got the, the farm houses of yours and... The nice semi-detached ones. That's it. I think they just work nice. I think when you have a bit of variance in here, it kind of just makes things more, I guess, more, more, more well interesting in that sense and I mean you know the first one we see here is this church this elevated church and um, I know that um, he actually has used the inspiration from an actual place on the island as well for this so it's not just a random thing he's putting here um, he's used that and you know that's inspired him to build this and again going back to my comments earlier about the the map layout itself there was a bit of a height change from one end to the other and this is a perfect way to to deal with that really isn't yeah, it? yeah that looks really good and I'm also loving the little dirt track next to that elevation it's uh mm. which branches off that sort of i love them sort of little details it's those details that make things feel realistic as well as look realistic yeah, definitely. like you can see you know on these farmlands he's put the tracks beside it which is where obviously the tracks would go um i mean sometimes i think we've all been in them situations where you just plant in fields down and we've not actually thought about okay, how the tracks how would the get, track to, get yeah. to this yeah, which I think is, you know, again, adds to the detail in how you look and perceive these these builds. And um, I know you're a big fan of these front gardens as well. I think these are really well detailed, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, really good. Loving the front gardens. Good use of decals, good use of parking spaces, as you can see with the yeah. cars parked out the front there. And good good road usage here, even added in the UK uh, white lines correctly. Yes, yeah. Right lines, and also he's put some of the um, the road car parking spots as well at the front, which is really cool. It's not something that um, I've, I've put down before, but he's got these ones just out the front for parking on the road, which is really cool. Yeah, that's good. And we've got the car parking area here, which I really like for the um, the pub, which we're just moving on to now. Um, and the, the overflow car The overflow car park, yeah, yeah, which is something that's quite common. You kind of tend to have these pubs which have a nice concrete, you know, Park, car parking area and then they have another bit after maybe perhaps they've um, underestimated how big their car park needs to be or they've got some event on and they then open up the the sort of almost dirtier area don't they which i think is really really very british as well and this area here is a, a little this is a different way we've not seen anyone build like this where it's a sort of almost like a square block of of houses with a little park in the middle i think that works really well as well very different yeah like a like a little private community sort of area and also another different type of way of building these, well, laying these houses out are these cul-de-sacs. I know you're a big fan of those. Yes, definitely. I mean, in my build I'm currently working on, I am thinking of, well, I am going to be creating a new build estate and I'm loving the way these cul-de-sacs are, are looking, especially with the, mm. the paths through the middles as well. So very mm. common sight. And, uh, mm. and finally, we've got this little industrial site. And I do like the fact that these, pretty much everyone, I think, has added some sort of an industrial area, which I think is really cool. Not only just for the mechanics of the game, but you know, you do tend to find these little tiny warehouses, or in this instance, I think this is a little a sales area for cars, isn't it, on here as well, with a little tire area next door as well. It just um, it just breaks things up, and it's another another thing to add into a rural build. Yeah, and I mean, it's realistic. In most villages, you are getting. It's like a mini industrial estate, aren't you? Especially, mm, especially the ones near yeah. me, anyway. And mm, this mm, one, definitely. this one looks very good. So yes, that's all five competitors, and um, in a way, I'm kind of glad that I. Um decided to let the viewers de decide who's going to win this because I don't know about you Rick but I don't think I could pick a an easy winner here everyone seems to have something different that really you know draws them apart from the rest yeah I mean this is it's a tough call everyone's done a great job uh, I mean yeah I'm glad I don't have to pick because <laughs> I, I, I yeah. seriously couldn't it's like there's hmm. something that shines in everyone 
That's it, yes. And I think everyone has some sort of a, a vibe that really works and would fit on the island perfectly well. And um, I mean, I'm, I'm always at that stage now where I'm thinking that I kind of wish I gave everyone a separate plot of land now because that would have filled out the island perfectly for me. And everyone has, you know, every build here is, is warranted to be on this island, I think. So maybe we'll look at doing something in the future, maybe bringing in some segments of these builds and putting it into the island because I think, you know, a lot of this area really needs to be shown off, I think. I definitely think you should put them all on the island somehow, but obviously mm. it's all the same area. Yeah, I think that's something I can look into. But um, anyway, Rick, thank you very much for joining us today and having a look over and um, casted your comments. And no um, It's been good. They've, yeah, incredible. Mm. And we really look forward to seeing what you produce both on your YouTube channel and obviously on the workshop as well. So keep those coming. Uh, I think I might just do that. <laughs> So again, a big thank you to Rick as well for joining me on this little review of these beautiful, beautiful builds. So well, the time is now upon us. Who has won the village build off? It's been really tough for me to even consider thinking on who would I like to win. I, I honestly couldn't. I know a lot of people will be thinking he must have a favorite, but I really don't. It's Everyone has put together a great build and there's certain aspects I love. And if I was to morph them all into one build, it would be probably the best build that could be possibly put on this island. But there has to be one winner. And let's find out who that winner is. And you voted WJ Koopman as your winner of the village build off. Congratulations to you, WJ Koopman. A fantastic build. And we certainly look forward to seeing what you and the other competitors do in the future. And on that point guys, check out in the description below because the majority of these guys have YouTube channels where they're uploading some of their builds. So if you enjoy what they've built, go and check out their channel and see what else they've done. So before we finish off this episode, the final thing for me to do is announce the winner of the copy of City Skylines or a DLC of your choosing based on your recent comment in the last video. And the lucky winner is... Mini Brim, congratulations. We'll get in touch very shortly to arrange which prize you would like. Thank you all very much, guys. Your comments have been absolutely amazing and I'm sure it's filled a lot of these creators with some great ideas and respect for their builds. And finally, guys, if you did enjoy this little pilot edition of a competition for the village build off, do let me know by hitting that like button and give me a comment. Let me know how it went, what you think we should do differently or how we can improve it. Also on a side note, the Patreon now has the uploaded save game for the most recent updated version of the map. So if you want to play along and have a look at the map in more detail, you could do so by jumping onto the Patrons. Other than that guys, thank you all very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this competition and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and all the best. <laughs>